Hey, Samuel here. Uh, welcome back to another episode here on Smashing Pillars International in Houston, Texas. Thanks again for joining me. I, I really appreciate it. I have a, a short message. It's actually a vision that I want to share with you. Um, I shared this vision with a couple of people, and uh, it got back to me that you know how much it really encouraged them. And, and then all of a sudden, over the weekend, I just felt like the Lord said, "Hey, you know, I want you to share that with. I want you to share that with everyone. I want you to post that to your to your site, your website." So that's what this is all about. I'm gonna this this vision, the message out of the vision. I'm, I'm gonna title it "Don't Curse Your Fig Tree." Okay, do not curse your fig tree. And uh, yeah, I'll get into that in just a second. I want to uh, ask you to. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do that. Subscribe, subscribe to my channel. You can also go to my website if you want to just sign up for uh, updates. If you want to subscribe through my website for updates, you can do that as well at smashingpillarsinternational.org. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your offerings and thank you for your prayers. And I mean, it's all making a difference. It, it really, really helps a lot. It means a lot to me. And I want you to know that I pray for you daily. I really do. And I appreciate it very much. So let me... Um, uh, again, thank you, and uh, God bless you. And uh, let me let me just open in prayer, and then we'll get started. Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you would put this word, put the revelation through this vision that you've given me, put it in the hearts of those that are going to listen to this so that it, it resonates in them. God, I thank you that for every everyone that's listening right now, I pray right now that that your power would be released in a new way, that your authority would be released in their lives in a new way. Lord, I thank you that um, their eyes would be open to see you moving on their behalf in, in whatever situation they're going through right now, that they would see you in the storm, that they would see you walking on the water towards them, Lord, and um, that before they know it, they'll find themselves on the other side of the sea, on the shore, standing on solid ground. I just thank you, Father, for, for, for doing this. Lord, I thank you that you'll lose not one. Not one will be lost, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, God, I pray that you would open our understanding to comprehend your scriptures tonight. And I thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let me just start with this passage here out of Mark. And it's going to be verses 11. This is Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 14, and then 20 through 24. Um, if I were you, I would uh, hit the pause button and get you a notebook and tablet. If you don't have it, get your Bible. And uh, uh, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna want that because you'll probably want to write down some things. But let me go ahead and start now. Now, the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry and seeing... From afar, a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Verse 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. And so Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God, for assuredly, I say to you, whoever says, that's key right there, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those words, those things that he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. So like I said earlier, you know, the, the, the Lord recently reminded me of this vision and uh, received it a few years ago. It, it has to be at least more than 10 years ago, Sunday morning during worship service. Um, and this was during a time in my life when I had so many responsibilities at work, my personal life, ministry, family drama, all of these things happening at the same time. And, you know, I was getting up early in the morning and working late into the night, at least six days out of the week. Uh, <laughs> that wears out on you, okay, after a while. But 
anyway, you know, needless to say, you know, within time I became stressed. I became uh, fatigued, bothered by the slightest thing, uh, irritable. I wasn't really a very fun person to be around at times. You know, my prayer and my devotional time I used to spend with the Lord every morning turned into complaining and murmuring about everything. You know, when I should have been praying about everything. You know, in the vision, here's the vision. I, you know, I was walking on this path. And I'm not sure where I was headed, but I noticed four men walking ahead of me, about maybe 50 feet ahead of me. And they were wearing what looked like biblical attire, biblical clothes. And I noticed one man stop to look at a, a tiny bush. The bush may have not even been four, four inches, five inches tall. It was a little bitty thing. But he walked over and he squatted down to look down at it. And uh, and so the other the other three guys, you know, gathered around him. So I rushed to to see, you know, what they were doing. And uh, when I when I got up to where they were, I stood behind the guy who was, you know, stooped over the bush and I was leaning over his shoulder and I saw that it was a little itty bitty fig tree. And that it was Jesus who was looking at the fig tree. And I said, oh, wow, wow. Oh, man, I know. I know. This is what I said to myself. I didn't say this out loud, but to myself, I said, I know exactly what he's going to do. He's going to curse the fig tree and it's going to die. And at that very moment, Jesus turned and he looked over his shoulder at me and he said, but I don't have to. And I was shocked. My first thought that came to my mind is you can see me. <laughs> of course, I can see you. But he said, I don't, I said, he's going to curse it and it's going to die. And he just looked at me and he said, but I don't have to, I could, I could bless this fig tree and it would immediately begin to produce food for me. That was the end of the vision. But later, you know, the Lord began to explain to, to me about, you know, things about the vision. He said that, you know, he's traveling to the next town to, to go and, you know, he's on his way to Jerusalem. I believe it was Jerusalem. And, uh, and then he suddenly was hungry. In other words, he suddenly had a need and there's this fig tree that could have produced what he needed had he blessed it instead of cursing it. He said the path in the vision is the path of life. This is the path that you're on, that I'm on, the path of life. And he said he was traveling, right? He said there's when you're traveling on in, on this path called life, he said there, there will be times in, in life when when you're going to have a need or, you know, maybe it's uh, maybe you're doing what God has called you to do. But then there's a need for resources all of a sudden, uh, just like in the vision, God provided a fig tree on the side of the road. It was a vehicle, if you will, that could have produced what Jesus needed. And God will see to it that there will always be a vehicle, a fig tree, if you will. It's symbolism. OK. There. In that time of need. That will produce what you need at that time. If you speak from God's perspective about your need, the vehicle um, the vehicle is actually, it, 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 well, let me just say it like that. If you speak from God's perspective about your need, I'll tell you what the vehicle really is in a little bit. But maybe you're carrying out an assignment the Lord gave you or the Lord has given to you um, to fulfill. And you've come to a standstill because of a lack of resources or I don't know, maybe maybe you lost your job or business or, or you don't know how you're going to pay your bills now. Whatever the case may be. The Lord has provided a vehicle. On the side of the road, on the in, on this path in life that you're on right now, there's a vehicle that's been provided to you. That will provide the resources you need. Speak life. That's all you have to do. Okay. That doesn't mean you just sit down and do nothing. But you speak. The word of the Lord. You, you, you speak. God's perspective about. You know. Your situation. But you also need to play your part. Do your part. You do what you need to do in the natural. You know. But. So anyway. What do, what do I really mean about. By vehicle. You know, what is this vehicle? The vehicle is your tongue. It's your tongue. Your tongue is the vehicle that 
that drives the direction of your life. It's in, it's in those times of need that you should remember that God has placed a vehicle nearby for you to speak. So that need that you have is met. Now, it's not just a need only. It could be, maybe you need wisdom. Maybe, maybe you know, it, it could be whatever it is. But whatever it is that you need from the Lord, it's got to it's gotta be spoken into it so that it's established here. And, and your tongue is the vehicle that God uses to funnel heaven to earth for you, so to speak. You don't think so? Listen to this, Proverbs 12, 13 and 14. An evil man is ensnared by the transgression of his lips, but the righteous escapes from trouble. From the fruit of his mouth, a man is satisfied with good. And the work of a man's hand comes back to him. This is the fruit of his mouth. He's talking about words. Okay. Listen to this. Proverbs 13 two. from the fruit of his mouth. A man eats what is good, but the desire of treacherous, the treacherous is for violence. And another great one here. This is Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You know, in that last passage, you know, the stomach is symbolic of your innermost being. It's not your physical stomach. It's, it's, it's symbolic of your innermost being. You know, that's your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions, your, your um, personality. The fruit in that passage is symbolic of words. Your mouth or the tongue is the door or the portal that good or bad life or death enters in through. You know, it could be read this way. A man's mind, will and emotions will be satisfied from the words of his mouth. From the words of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and you will eat its fruit. I'm going to tell you how important words are, especially in this time right now. Especially if you're going through something and you're going through a hard thing, your words are so important. Set a guard over your mouth, set a guard over your mouth. Listen to Proverbs 23 verse seven. It says, for as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. A great friend of mine uh, used to say, and I'm, pretty, I'm sure he still does. That the thing that captures you, your attention, whatever captures your attention, captures you. For as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Um, Proverbs 4, 23. This is the NLT translation. It says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Wow. Wow. Here's another one, Proverbs 4, 23, same one, but this is the NIV. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So remember, a man's heart or a man's stomach, same thing, your heart is your innermost being, stomach is your innermost being, it's symbolism. So a man's heart will be satisfied from the words of his mouth. From the words of his lips shall he be filled. That's why that's why it's so important to it's so important to guard your heart. Listen to what Jesus said in Mark seven. This is verse eighteen through twenty three, and he said to them, "Are you thus without understanding? Do you not perceive that whatever enters a man from outside cannot defile him, because it does not enter his heart, but his stomach, and is eliminated, thus purifying all foods?" And he said, "What comes out of a man that defiles a man." From within, out of the heart, men, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man. So now you see why it's so important to guard your heart above all else, because it determines the course of your life. You know, we got to remember, we have to remember that everything you do for God, everything we do for God, every, everything 
we get from him is all going to be by faith. And we speak by faith. I, I think that there's the reason there are two slightly different versions of the story of the fig tree in the Bible is to teach us something because it's that, that parable is actually in uh, Mark and it's also in Matthew. But let me share a couple of verses from those two passages. Mark 11, 14 and 20. In response, Jesus said, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his di disciples heard it. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Matthew 21, 18 and 19 says, Now in the morning, as he turned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, Let no one grow, no, no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately the fig tree withered away. So in Mark, it seems that it was sometime later after Jesus cursed the fig tree that it dried up. And then in Matthew, it says when Jesus cursed the fig tree, immediately it dried up. So I believe that the purpose for the difference in this is to teach us that some prayers, some words, right? We're talking about your, the power of your words and prayer, okay? Some prayers are answered immediately and others are answered with time. If you understand this, you, you, you can trust God. If you know that he keeps his word, that he's a man of his word, then you can trust him and that he'll, he'll answer your prayer at the right time. You, you know, we, we just need to not grow weary in well-doing, knowing that eventually you'll reap in due time. You will reap. God's not a man. I'll say it again. He does not lie. Let me share another one with you. Uh, this is Luke 13, verse 6 through 9. And he also spoke this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard and he came seeking fruit on it and he found none. And then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, look, for three years I've come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and he said to him, sir, let it alone this year also until I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, well, but if not, after that, you can cut it down. All right, so let's say in this parable, the fig tree represents, man, God's promises to you, whatever that is. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on it. Don't give up on, on God's promises. Don't give up on people. And certainly don't give up on yourself. Let's go over to Luke 18 right now. Luke 18, 1 through 8. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought to always pray and not lose heart, saying, there was a certain, in a certain city there was a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And then the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said. And shall, shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out to him day and night, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Even if the promise isn't whatever it is that you're believing for, Jesus returns before he's going to find you in faith. You know, I, let's just go look at the, look at a couple of words in that in that very first um, phrase up there that men all to men always ought to pray and not lose heart. That word ought in Strong's, it means that it's necessary there's a need of, it behooves, it's right and proper. The root of that word, it means to bind, to fasten with chains, to throw into chains, to bind. Huh, isn't that interesting? Does that sound familiar to you? He's saying, it says there that you ought to, always ought to pray and not lose heart. You always ought to bind and fasten with chains. Remember uh, what Jesus said and. um, 
Matthew 16, verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. This is this is talking about this is he was using legal terminology there. This is basically saying what's legal and illegal in the kingdom. And it's necessary that we bind and we loose the kingdom and and that we're releasing God's words, his decrees, his judgments, his his declarations. Listen to what lose heart means. Uh in some in some translation it may say faint. Right? So men ought to always pray and not faint or lose heart. Uh it means to be utterly spiritual spiritless <laughs> wow if you don't pray you can become utterly spiritless and wearied out exhausted and i know i've been there before remember i got this vision from the lord because i was going through that all of that okay but listen to that isn't that mind blowing Lose heart or faint. It means to be utterly spiritless, to be wearied out, to be exhausted. The root of that word means of a bad nature, of a mode of thinking, feeling, and acting. Troublesome, injurious, pernicious, destructive, baneful. Wow, that's pretty pretty heavy stuff, man. Pernicious means having a harmful effect, especially in a gradual or subtle way. And then baneful means productive of destruction or woe. Seriously harmful, poisonous, causing destruction or serious harm. So, wow. Okay, so why should you never lose heart? Because if you lose heart, that means you are utterly spiritless and you're now vulnerable to believing what your circumstances are saying to you. And as you begin to think in your heart, so will you be. Think about that. In Matthew 12, 35 through 37, it says this, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words, you will be justified and by your words, you'll be condemned. That's not just in the day of judgment. That's in the now, in the here and now. By our words, we're justified and by our words, we're condemned. You know what an idle word is? An idle word is, it's not black or white, it's, uh, it's gray. You know, gray matter produces nothing. So uh, an idle word is a word that produces nothing. Hey, let's go back to that phrase, man, ought to, ought to pray and not lose heart. Always pray and not lose heart. Well, remember, the root of that losing heart or being faint is to be of a bad nature, of a mode of thinking, feeling, and acting, right? Troublesome, injurious, pernicious, destructive, baneful. But listen to the opposite of that. Second Corinthians 9.10, I know this, this verse is used as a tithe, an offering, you know, verse, but... Listen to it from a different perspective right now. Now may he who supplies seed, what, what is seed in the Bible? Word, right? Now to he who supplies seed or word to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed, the words, basically, you've sown and increased the fruits of your righteousness. That word righteousness, if you look that up in the Greek, it means this, integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness. Get this last one, guys correctness of thinking feeling and acting wow to be to not pray and to lose heart can cause you to be be of a bad nature and a and a bad mode of thinking feeling and acting that produces the fruit of being troublesome injurious pernicious destructive baneful but praying as we should God gives us words. He gives us seed to sow. He prays through you. He decrees through you. And the fruit of that is integrity, virtue, purity of life, rightness, correctness of thinking, feeling, and acting.
Wow. This takes us right back to Proverbs 18, guys. Verse 20 and 21. A man's stomach, his soul, shall be satisfied from the fruit, the words of his mouth. And from the produce, the words of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the words from his tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow. Okay, so have you figured it out yet? I think I've said it already, but just in case you didn't hear me. What's the vehicle God's provided for you in times of need on the path of life? It's your tongue. It's your tongue. Your tongue. It's the rudder that steers the course of your life. Um, man, I can't tell you how important it is to get a hold of that. Get a hold of that. Get a hold of your tongue. Okay. James 3 verses 4 through 10. Look, look at ships too. Though they are so large and driven by harsh winds, they are steered by a tiny rudder wherever the pilot's inclination is direct. So too the tongue is a small part of the body, yet it, it has great pretensions. Think how small a flame sets a huge forest ablaze, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue represents the world of wrongdoing among the parts of our bodies. It pollutes the entire body and sets fire to the course of human existence and is set on, hell, on fire by hell itself. For every kind of animal, bird, reptile, and sea creature is subdued and has been subdued by mankind, but no human can subdue the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse people made in God's image. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. These things should not be so, my brothers and sisters. So look, maybe you're going through a difficult season in life. I believe things are going to change for you if you just hold on a little longer. Don't give up. Don't give up on the promise that God made to you. Don't give up on your dreams just because things didn't go the way you thought they would go in life. If you thought you heard God tell you to do something and it didn't turn out the way you thought it would, admit that you missed it and move on. We all miss it. But to do something you thought God told you to do or something he told you would happen and it didn't, don't don't dig your heels in the sand and harden your heart and blame God for not coming through. The truth of the matter is you may have just not heard from the Lord. It may, maybe it was something you wanted so bad that you convinced yourself, God said. But I encourage you, keep on believing and confessing. Don't neglect your relationship with the Father. It's in these times that, you know, we should draw close to him. Closer to him more than ever. You, you, you might not be able to see it right now, but change is coming. It's going to come. Just make sure not to let doubt and unbelief get a hold of your tongue. Resist fear, worry, and anxiety, and they'll flee from you. Let me just say that again, that last line. Make sure not to let doubt and unbelief get a hold of your tongue. You know, thinking about your problems all the time and talking about your problems all the time literally makes your problems grow. Why not fertilize the fig tree instead of cursing it? Proverbs twelve eighteen says, There is one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise promotes health. Or how about Psalm 17, 3 through 5? You've tested my heart. You've visited me in the night. You've tried me and have found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth shall not transgress. Wow. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, Lord, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths that my footsteps may not slip. You see, see, there's the key right there. By the power of his lips, the word of his lips. Is how we are kept from the paths of the destroyer. The one who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Psalm 39 verse 1. I said I will guard my ways. Wow, this is, this is a good one. I will guard my ways lest I sin with my tongue. 
I will restrain my mouth with a muzzle while the wicked are before me. In other words, don't join in the gossip at the office. Don't don't slander. Don't talk about other people when people are talking about someone and you want to you're tempted to get in there and say, oh, yeah, man, I know that guy gets on my nerves, too, or whatever. Don't 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 go there. Set a guard over your mouth. Keep a watch over the door of your lips. Micah 7 verse 5 says, do not trust in a neighbor and do not have confidence in a close friend. Guard your lips from her who lies in your arms. Wow. So you see this vision. Jesus, you know, I see Jesus. He's about to curse the fig tree and he says, but I don't have to. I could cur- I could bless it and it would produce what I need. And there are going to be times in life when you're going to. You're going to have a need, Samuel. You're going to have a need, brother, sister, whether it be finances or whether it be an opportunity or whatever it could be. And what's going to unlock it and and into your possession is going to it's going to be the key is in your mouth. It's what you're saying. It really is that simple. Uh, I, I want to. I want to share something. I, I'm, I'm done, actually. But I want to share this this quick story that's on my heart that uh, really fits with this. And this is a this is about something that happened while I was working, you know, in corporate America. And there was a young sales rep that came in one day and um, he was introduced to me and he says, oh, you're the famous Samuel Ramos. Well, I'm here to knock you off your pedestal. And I said, uh, okay, well, hey, it was nice to meet you. And, uh, you know, I was, I mean, I was really blessed, you know, when I was working in corporate American sales and, uh, you know, I was like in the top 2% in sales in the nation. And so, um, you know, God was blessing me and this guy, this was how the guy introduced himself to me in front of our bosses. And I just kind of chuckled, you know. And then I was asked to, this was a Friday. Then I was asked to let this guy ride around with me for a whole week. So I was like, sure, absolutely. So we rode around together all week long. The following week, we have a sales meeting every Monday morning. Uh, The managers asked him, there's probably, let's say about 10 of us on this team, uh, not including the managers. Uh, And they asked him, well, so what'd you think of uh, your first week, you know, riding around with Samuel? This guy's response was, well, I don't think he, Samuel knows what the H he's doing. I don't think he knows what the heck heck he's doing. And, you know, we all kind of chuckled. I laughed and we all laughed. And then they said, no, no, seriously. You know, what do you think? He said, no, I was serious. I don't think he knows what he's doing. Uh, This guy just, I don't know, for some reason, he's just arrogant, prideful, offensive. I mean, I was never offended by him. I worked with him for like two years. And, uh, but, and my mom, my mother, you know, every morning, you know, my mom, you know, lives with me. And back then she used to make me breakfast tacos and I'd go to work real early. I would get, I was one of the first guys there. And this guy used to get there early too. And he would come in and he would smell the breakfast tacos and man, they smell delicious. I'm like, come on. And so, it became kind of like a little ritual of ours. You know, we'd get there early in the morning. He'd come and sit down and have a couple of tacos with me. And But he was still a jerk. <laughs> he was still a jerk. And uh, But it didn't, you know, it never really got under my skin. It never, I never picked up an offense or nothing like that. You know, I just understood this is a young guy. You know, he's, you know, ambitious and all those kind of things. And so anyway, but one day. He, uh, one morning, this was like a Friday, I believe it was, I was, we were all there, all the sales reps were in the sales bullpen and, and he says, uh, Hey Samuel, where's my, uh, where's my waste, uh, my recycle waste bin? Uh, what'd your mom do with it after she cleaned up my cubicle last night? And all the guys and they were like, Whoa, you know, this, this is like working with like a whole bunch of construction workers. We worked in the industrial manufacturing segment, so. So you can imagine, you know, they were just popping off and having a good time with it. And, and I kind of laughed because I didn't really hear what he said. And I said, what would you say? And he, so when he repeated it, I, I did get offended. 
it made me really mad. And I thought, you know, this guy eats my mom's tacos, you know, <laughs> for two years. This guy's been nothing but a jerk, you know. And and so I, I just, I, it got a hold of me for some reason. And I was so angry that I just packed up my laptop and everything and I left for the day. This was early in the morning. So I'm sharing this with you because I know some of you need to hear this. Some of you are going through this. And you need to hear this because um, it uh, it might help you avoid making some wrong decisions. So anyway, I, I said, you know what? I'm going to report him. I'm not going to let him get away with this. I'm going to actually make a report to him. I'm going to report him to HR. But I'm going to wait. <laughs> Listen to this, guys. I'm going to wait until I'm not mad anymore so that when I do send this email into HR, I'm just being honest and sharing the facts and I'm not you know, um, making it out to be worse than it really was, you know, just want to make this report. And, but really what I was doing was I was retaliating my honestly, if I had to be honest with you guys, I was retaliating. I wanted this guy to get in trouble. I wanted so bad for him to get in trouble that I went over my boss's head. I should have the first order, uh, should have been for me to go to my boss first. And I went right over his head straight to HR. So my boss calls me in the office and he says, why did you do this? Why didn't you come talk to me? You know? And I said, you know, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, this got documented and whatever. So he said, um, next time come to me. So he said, we've already talked to him and we told him that he needs to, he needs to type up a, uh, an apology to you. And so we told him that, you know, he needs to do that by Monday morning. When you come in Monday, he needs to be able to give that to you. So go and have a good weekend and don't think about it. So I left. So that Friday night I went to church and, you know, saw my church friends there. Been going there for years and all that. And, you know, at some point during some of the conversations with I had when I, that I had there with some of the people at different times, uh, the question would always come up. How was your week? And I'd say, oh, my week was great. You know, it was okay, but then this happened. And this guy, and I went off and I just told everything that I just shared with you, okay? Oh, yeah, you know, this guy, you know, just, uh, you know, I've been nothing but nice to him. He's been nothing but a jerk to me. And then he became racist and he began to say, my mom cleaned up after him. And I went and I, you know, I made a report to HR because I'm done. I didn't want to mess with me anymore. And, you know, I, I shared that a few times with different people that Friday night. Saturday, I went to a men's function and same thing. Hey, how was your week? My week was great. How was your week? My week was okay. But you know what happened? And I shared, you know, so I kept sharing this story, right? And, uh, and then Sunday morning happened again before service. I was talking with some people and I was asked again, how was your week? And I said, my week was okay. And, uh, except for this little hiccup. And I shared again about, you know, what happened with this guy. And as I was walking away from that conversation, the Lord said to me, I want you to stop talking about that already. And I stopped. I mean, it was so clear. He wasn't yelling at me, but his voice was so clear to me when he said, I want you to stop talking about that already. And I stopped right in my tracks and I said, yes, sir. All of a sudden, I felt a little bit of fear. And I said, uh, why? What did I do? And he said, well, you see, all these people that you've shared this story with, they're all your friends. They love you. And every one of them has formed an opinion in their mind and a judgment in their minds, in their heart against this guy because of what you've told them and they don't even know the guy they may never even meet him but because of what you've said to him uh, about him to them they have formed an opinion and a judgment against him because you've slandered you've been slandering this guy yeah what he did was not right but you've been slandering him by sharing all these things and causing him to be judged by these people and that judgment it's going to be measured back to them, but I'm holding you accountable for that, Samuel. Uh, man, guys, I'm telling you, it's like no wind beneath my wings. Talk about a crash landing. 
you know, and I realized what what God was saying was so true. I felt so bad. I felt so bad for the guy, first of all. And then I felt so bad because, you know, all I defiled all these people with this story. And, you know, so I got it all straight. Now, oh, <laughs> here's another thing. And the Lord said, when you go, <laughs> I forgot about this part. Um, so when you return to work Monday morning, the first thing I want you to do is walk straight up to him. And I want you to apologize to him. Think about that. You know, it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what you think. I'm not the one who's right. I'm, you know, the one who's right. God is right. Okay. He's right. He will always be right. Everything the king says is right. And if he says Samuel or whatever your name is, you know, you need to go in there and you need to apologize. You need to do it. And I did. I went in there Monday morning. I mean, I had to like get my head really focused and all that. And I went in there and he was and it just so happened. Everybody was there that day. And God said, I don't man, I don't care who's there. You need to do that in front of everybody there if everyone's there. And I did. I did it with a pure heart. I walked straight up to him and he happened to be typing up the letter. And uh, I said, hey, hey, good morning. Uh, I want to apologize to you. I want to apologize to you. And then I told him why I was apologizing. And the guy was visibly shaken, as well as all the other reps in the, in the office. It was so quiet in there. They were all shaken by that. They, they just... It, it, it shocked them. I mean, I, I really felt like the presence of the Lord manifest so tangibly. They knew something. It was more than just an apology. They, they knew God was in, in the room with us. And I told a guy, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm so sorry that I allowed myself to be offended by you, you know, and uh, I shouldn't have. I don't know why I did. Maybe you were just joking and I don't, I don't know, but I, I just want, you to know, I, I apologize and, you don't type that letter. You don't have to type that letter. And I turned and I walked over to my cubicle and he, he said, okay. And I reached out and to shake his hand and, you know, he slowly put his hand out like, you know, what are you going to do? Cut my hand off or something. But he shook my hand and I just smiled at him and I turned around and went back to work. I went and sat in my cubicle on the other side of the wall there and went back to work and it was quiet in there. But you know what? It changed something. You know, all of that, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was ugly to go through all that. And it was humiliating and it was all those kind of things, anger, all that kind of stuff. But the end of it was fruit. The end of it was victory. The end of it was the devil thought he was going to split and divide this. He was going to cause all kinds of problems there on the, on that team. We had a really strong team and the end of it was victorious. The team was not divided. There was no offense. There was no unforgiveness towards anyone. And we just moved on and continued to knock it out the ballpark concerning sales. And uh, so I just felt to share that story with you because if you're going through something and it happens to be a situation where somebody did something to you, don't go around telling everyone about it. Remember, the more you talk about your problems, you know, the bigger they're going to get. Don't go around telling people everything because you're what you're going to do is even though you may be innocent in the, in the situation, if you're telling other people, especially people who love you, your friends and all that, they're going to side with you. And they're going to form judgments in their hearts towards whoever it is you're talking about, even if they've never met the person. And that judgment is going to be measured back to them. Remember, do not judge, do not condemn. You won't be judged. You won't be condemned for with with every judgment, every condemnation, you're gonna it's gonna be measured back to you. So um but God's gonna hold you accountable. And so I was quick to to mop up the mess, man. You know, I I talked to everybody that I could, told them I was so sorry. I didn't mean to, to even it was none of your business. I shouldn't have even told you anything. And uh and got it all taken care of and moved on. And that's what I wanna say to you is don't curse your fig tree. If you're going through things, if you're going through a hard time right now, don't allow yourself to be caught up in complaining and murmuring. And I remember I used to go to my pastor 
Pastor Tony Krishak over at Victory Christian Center in Houston, Texas. And uh, I've known him for many, many years. Still, still good friends with him today. And I'd go and uh, once a week and ask for prayer. I would actually go into his office to complain about my life in the form of a prayer request. Think about that. And he was so gracious. You know, I would just, we had just, I started visiting his church and we had just met and, and, uh, week after week after week, I'd go in there for prayer and he'd pray with me. And then one week I went in, same thing, same complaints, same murmuring, all in the form of a prayer request. But this time I saw his, his countenance just kind of changed and he kind of looked at me and he said, you know what, Samuel, if you hate the life that you're living so much, change what you're saying. And man, I'm telling you, that was so profound, you know, kind of offended me a little bit. (laughs) But the truth was, and I told him, I said, what, what did you just say to me? After I chewed on those words for a little bit, I said, you know what, pastor, you're right. Oh my gosh, you're right. My own words have been setting the course of my life. And I'm, I'm about to make a course correction. And I just want to say that to you. Don't curse your fig tree. Don't do that. Speak life. Especially when you think everything around you is dying. Speak life. And, and, and it will begin to bud forth for you. I want to want to just share this last verse with you. This is James 1 verse 26 out of the Amplified Bible. If anyone thinks himself to be religious, scrupulously observant of the rituals of his faith and does not control his tongue, but deludes his own heart. This person's religion is worthless, futile and barren. I'm going to say it again. Don't curse your fig tree. You, you might be going through a difficult thing. Something that you've never endured before. Just remember this. That's when you can be the most. This is when you could be the most vulnerable emotionally and spiritually. Guard your heart and your heart will guard you. I want to pray for you. But first, I want you to repeat a short prayer with me and then I'll pray for you. And um, if this really speaks to you, then then say this prayer with me. Uh, Father, in Jesus name. I ask you to forgive me for every misunderstanding that I've had with you. I know your thoughts towards me are only good. And that my soul knows very well. I ask you to forgive me for every ungodly word that I've spoken over myself, over my situations, over my friends and family. Every cursed word, words of failure, words of condemnation, words of lack, limitation, poverty. Lord, I ask you to forgive me for speaking death and not life. And I take authority over these words now. And I command all these words to fall dead to the ground. I forbid these words to bear any fruit in my life anymore. I forbid these words to have an influence in my life. Or anyone connected to me. God I pray that. You would release a fresh anointing to me. Today. And that you would restore your word. And in the fire. The zeal of the Lord in me. To speak your word at all times. I thank you for doing it in Jesus name. Amen. All right, so let me pray for you now. Father in Jesus name I pray for my brother my sister. In Jesus' name, I break the power of every ungodly word, every cursed word spoken over you. In Jesus' name, every ungodly vow, oath, or promise that you've made, right, with words of revenge, retaliation, backlash against anyone. I break the power of those words now. I, Father, I ask you to lift every judgment and condemnation that my brother or sister may have brought upon their own heads. I ask you to lift those now. And to release them from the weight of that. Now, Lord, I pray that you would begin the that you would be in the process of restoring to them the things that have been withheld, opportunities, blessing, finances, jobs, relationships, all these things, Lord, that they would be restored, Lord. God, and I pray that uh, 
that even right now, the path that they're on, Lord, that you would show them that, Lord, that you would cause them to understand and comprehend that the vehicle that you've provided that will funnel resources, that will bring your presence, that will bring your peace, that will all the things that they need is in the power of their tongue. Lord, that you would begin to give them decrees and declarations to speak. Lord, that you would take them to the scriptures, Lord, that they would take the word of God and begin to fill their heart with it and that they would actually begin to release it, that they would decree and declare the word of God over their life and family, job, ministry. God, I thank you right now, Lord, that the tide of the battle changes. I thank you that fig trees are bearing fruit. I, I see fig trees all across the body of Christ bearing fruit, not withering and dying. God, I pray that you would release angels to war over this prayer, war over your people. Bring it to pass for your glory and for your honor and for your praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. All right. All right. So don't curse your fig tree. Jesus said he didn't have to and you don't have to either. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So. Uh, yeah, so there's only one thing left to do. I want you to uh, put your hands up in the air, bow your head and close your eyes, receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, give you peace. Father, I thank you that my brother, my sister has been marked with your name and that blessing, blessing has been released to overtake them and i thank you for doing all these things in jesus mighty name amen and amen all right well my name is samuel you've been watching or <laughs> listening to smashing pillars here in houston texas thank you so much for for joining me and i hope this message helped you and encouraged you and strengthened you and uh, please share it with others for the glory of god for his praise honor and glory amen all right until next time shalom shalom <laughs>